Picture this setting. You wake up and spend the first 15 minutes of your day groggily looking at your phone. You head out to brush your teeth, listening to some YouTube video that you picked out. Then you then make your bed listening to a different kind of video. Finally, you have your morning cup of coffee. It's 8 in the morning, you haven't slept nearly enough at night. And once you're done with your coffee, you head for a shower. In the shower, again, you spend your time listening to a podcast. It's motivational, you feel like you're doing something productive. You come out of the shower, change into your work clothes and hop on the bus to drive down to work. Does this sound like the first 15 minutes of your day? That's how the first 60 minutes of my day look like today. The only difference is that instead of going to work today, I stayed at home. And no, I did not wake up at 8 in the morning. I woke up at 9.30 today. Yesterday was a late night and today marks the start of a new week. A week that I just wasn't ready for. I have a confession to make to you guys. I haven't always been 100% honest on my channel. Every video that I've either done on finance, business or self-improvement on this channel has always been written and recorded when I was in a good state of mind. It was from this space of mind that I'd give advice to people about how you should go about living your lives or how you should create and plot your financial futures. And for someone who's looking for relatable advice, probably a lot of content that you see on YouTube is prepared in the same way. I get it. It's so tough to relate to someone who comes off as preaching to you. So for today's video, and today is not the greatest day for me, but I'm going to try and like be as relatable as I can. For today's video, I'm going to answer this one simple question for you. How do you build a life that you will end up loving? And what is it that you should do so that you know where you're trying to go? Step number one, stop being a people pleaser. You're only lying to people. So recently I came across this kind of personality type, the people pleaser. Every single person that you meet to some extent does have the traits of a people pleaser and it's good to want to make those around us happy. However, a chronic people pleaser is a piece of work. They are desperate to feel important, wanted and popular. In order to do this, they are always helpful. The first to volunteer. They don't want to hurt anybody else's feelings and they keep all their opinions to themselves. To the outside world, the people pleaser is agreeable and easygoing. To his partner or family, not so much. The people pleaser is wearing a mask. He's inauthentic and a liar. A good way to find out if you're actually people pleasing is to ask yourself this question. How often do I say yes to things that I don't actually want to do? or don't have the time for. If the answer is more often than not, then you will actually be able to feel the suffocation building within. If you're feeling constantly exhausted and irritated with people, this could be a good indication of that. In fact, the only people that people pleasers put their foot down with is their own close friends and family or their own partners and their family. But that is only because deep down, you know that your nearest and dearest ones will always love you and that you can go much further pushing them than you can with somebody else that you're not as close with. You see, while trying to please people, People. It's often done at our own expense. Being someone who constantly changes what they feel so that they can gain the acceptance of people around them is a sad and tiring journey to be on. You'll constantly be putting aside what you want to do in the moment so that you can please someone else and offer them a compromise that they might not even want. If you're currently spending your whole day living a life that someone else wants you to live, then what you need to do is take a small amount of control back for yourself. Do some activity that you want to do. It could be heading out for a dance class or going to the gym to get a workout in. If you want to start building a life that you love, then you will need to start doing things that you want to do. Going with the flow is a saying that should be reserved for only two things, dead fish and people who want to be unhappy don't go with the flow. Step number two, reflect. I like to think of positive and negative feelings as symptoms of how your brain feels about the way you're living your life. If you're constantly waking up every day for weeks on end feeling like crap, but you continue to go about hustling and living your life, then let me stop you right there. Stop and think, is the work that you're doing actually take you in a direction that you want to be going in? Or are you just working for the sake of just hustling and being in the grind? This is where it's so important to stop working. Pick up a pen and write down on a piece of paper exactly what you're feeling and know do not type your thoughts out, write them down. Some important questions that you can ask yourself can be the following. What are the different projects that I'm working on right now and how do I feel about the work that I'm doing? What are my reasons for doing them and will I want to be doing this for the next six months or the coming year? And what would my life look like if I continued what I'm doing for the next two years and am I happy with the outcome? Most of us know what we want to do instinctively, you know, but when we start thinking about taking action, our brains go into fight or flight mode and we get bogged down by all these anxious thoughts that completely stop us from taking any kind of action. This 
This is why journaling and being mindful of your feelings really matters. How real are the consequences? Are you making a mountain out of a molehill or is there a legitimate concern that needs to be tackled? Is the pain of you being in your current state more or less than the pain of the effort required to get you out of your current state? More often than not, when the pain of action is less than the pain of inaction, most people won't take a decision. If you really want to change where you're at right now, be grateful for the pain of the situation you're in and use it to motivate you to move on. Step number three. Get out of the feeling of inertia. I'm someone who likes to think a lot. I think about how I'm feeling. I think about what I want to be doing constantly. But thinking is only the first step. There are so many times where I've done my reflection and the real issues with taking action. There is no word better than inertia to describe a situation like this. There have been days in the past year where I've been bogged down with indecision. I was spending more time thinking about a problem and talking about it to my friends and family than I did with taking action towards solving that problem. You need to accept that although advice from a good friend is great, the only way that you'll get anything out of that conversation is if you take action. If you're feeling stuck and you feel like you're in a place of inertia, the only way to break out of this is to get your ass moving. Allow me to use an example to explain what I mean. Say that you're working a busy job in a city where 60 hours of your workday gets consumed, heading to and coming back from work. You need the money and you're happy with your job, so there's nothing that needs changing there. But there's this nagging thought that comes up every other day. I want to travel. Maybe you want to travel to a distant country and experience a new culture. Fair enough. But what action are you taking to actually get to this goal? At the end of the week, what if you're just so tightly wound that you want to cut loose and meet up with some friends and have a good time? There's nothing wrong with that. But notice how you spend the whole week dreaming of some traveling. And the second you get some free time, you just go and have a night out drinking. Now, I'm not saying that having a good time is bad. No, not at all. You should unwind in whatever way you feel fit. But I'm trying to point to you something a little deeper, something more sinister about the human brain. We all have a desire for certain experience in life, a certain purpose, if you will. We write those desires down on a piece of paper and we hold them close to our hearts. But deep down, you will never be happy if you believe and you secretly believe and you feel that you won't be able to achieve these desires. It's almost like telling a six-year-old child who dreams of being an astronaut that they will never be able to do it. If someone did this to six-year-old me, it would have shattered me. So why are you doing it to yourself? Every time you have a desire and you do not take action towards realizing that desire, you are actually telling the inner six-year-old in you that his dreams are useless, he's never going to achieve them. And that's why I feel like you're feeling down. It's because your inaction is telling you, hey Rahul, you know that dream life that you have of yourself, the one that you've pictured for the last 15 years? Haha, you're never gonna get it. Knowing this subconsciously can be crushing. When you begin to take action instead of just thinking of your problems over and over, what you actually end up doing is that you tell that inner six-year-old that yeah, your dreams can come true. Get out of the feeling of inertia. Start taking action and start moving. Get your small wins every single day. If that means calling up your friend and going out for a weekend trek so that you can get the feeling of traveling, do it. If it means heading to the gym for just 15 minutes after a long day of work just so that you can take care of your health, do it. Step number four, change the stories that you tell yourself. Everyone has a story that they've written of themselves. These are the kind of stories that are not said out loud, but they're played over and over again in the mind of the storyteller. Every time you interact with someone and you feel a little out of place, every time you step on that weighing scale and you don't like the number that it reads, and every time you wake up in the morning and you don't feel happy about where you are, you're constantly repeating that story to yourself. What I'm going to tell you to do now might seem a little controversial, but bear with me. I want you to start lying. Not to anyone else, but just to yourself. You see that story that you tell yourself, the one that you really believe, the one where you're not good enough. Take that page out of your storybook, rip it up and throw it away. And once you're done throwing away that page, replace it with a new one. Write down a new story, a story about who you want to be. When you do that, you might feel a weight lifted off your shoulders. And if you do feel that weight lifted off your shoulders, damn, I'm happy for you. Because that means you're on the right track. When we change the stories that we tell ourselves from a more negative hue to a positive tone, it's like taking the blindfold off and ditching a narrative that was never serving us. Ditch that voice in your head that tells you that you're not good enough, that you're an imposter. A few months ago on Filter Coffee Finance, as part of a series called The Library, I did a review of a book titled Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Released 1937, Think and Grow Rich was written after Hill had interviewed and studied the lives of hundreds of CEOs and inspirational founders during the early 1900s. One thing that all of these great people interviewed by Hill did was they always repeated positive stories of themselves to themselves. They didn't really care about what society thought. Even if society did find these stories weird or unrealistic, they didn't care. In order to create the life that you want, you need to start thinking unrealistic. You need to change the story. Here's an example of how I'm trying to do it in my day-to-day -day life. This is me from about one and a half years ago. 
I weighed in at about 61 kilos at the time and yeah I identified as skinny and a nerdy person and I used to regularly go for 10 to 15 km runs but I never identified myself as someone who was shredded I never had a six pack and always looked underweight and skinny that was something that I wanted to change so I started going to the gym regularly since Feb 2022 and now I can confidently say that on average I've worked out four times a week during a one and a half year period it wasn't easy because there was a period where I was moving around quite a bit and there was also the question of some exams that I was writing but I strongly believe that the reason why I was able to turn up each week and pump out a workout was because I truly began to look at myself as the man who did go to the gym as the man who was fit the stories I told myself had changed a long time before my reality actually did there's something incredibly cool about the way memories work that constantly fascinates me the nice thing about the present is that it interacts with everything in your brain and you can change things memories are different in how they work memories change every time you use them for example say that you have a memory of what you had for lunch yesterday and I asked you what did you have for lunch what you're doing when you try to answer my question is you'll go back in time open up the memory that you have of yesterday and tell me what you had for lunch but whatever happens right now the fact that i asked you what you have for lunch is also going to be added to that memory right now so when you go and save that file of your memory or whatever however you like to think of it you will always remember the fact that when you think of the lunch that you had yesterday you'll also remember this part of the video where i asked you what you had for lunch and in a way that memory has been modified hasn't it every time that you access a memory of the past and try to recall it you open a different version of the story and it keeps getting updated which means that you can actually change the past you can actually change your very own experience of things this is actually why therapy works you and your girlfriend end things you're hurt and you go and talk about it with your therapist your therapist listens to you and maybe makes you look at the story in a more positive note and you save that memory and you do this week in week out for 5 to 6 weeks and suddenly your recollection of the breakup is no longer as painful you're more willing to move on as well after 5 to 6 meetings you have a completely different version of the breakup story and this is so powerful this is so powerful it means that we can change our perspective and the narrative that we have of life we can change our past to simulate and create better versions of life we can make ourselves happy we can make bad things look better and we can change the way we look at ourselves and it's all by virtue of changing our story look at our memory differently and save it again that's the power of stories if you are feeling stuck and you do want to change a small bit about yourself i strongly suggest that you read this book called think and grow rich for those of you who are interested i'll attach the affiliate link of the book down below and you can help out the channel by buying from that link think and grow rich is an amazing read and i'm going through it for the second time this year and i already feel like i picked up so many new things from the book that i didn't pick up the first time and with that we come to the end of this week's video on filter coffee finance as always i really hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to like this video and leave a comment down below so that the you YouTube algorithm knows that you love me. Thanks for watching guys and until we meet again this is Fitcoffee Finance signing off.